Hey guys, Mars Thinking here, bringing you another Dragon Ball Z Dokkan battle video. And so today, I thought we would have a look at the list of units that are currently available on Global to talk about what units you should buy with your yellow coins. Now, uh, if you're on JP, uh, JP did just recently add the Tapion and Minosha, so they're not available for Global. Uh, but we will talk about them a little bit throughout the course of this video as well. So. When it comes to yellow coins, now obviously a lot of the time if you're free to play or you don't spend a lot of money on the game, uh, so a lot of people, myself included, recommend that you don't really summon all that much on legendary summon banners. But of course the uh, silver lining to doing so is that you get these yellow coins so that you can eventually pick out an LR. So I think since the coin system has been introduced, I think I've bought three... I think three, maybe four. And as you can see here, I actually have enough to buy another one, which I am currently contemplating uh, what to do. Because one thing I will say straight away, regardless of what I say in this video about which one I think is the best choice or like second best, whatever, things like that. Uh, I do still stick to the same sort of mentality when it comes to purchasing units with coins, which is that I don't normally ever buy a unit that I already have at least two dupes in. Um... You could make an argument for getting one from 79 to 90, but if you buy that last copy of an LR to get them from 90% to 100, you run the risk. Like, you just know on the next banner, you're going to pull a copy of them. And uh, nowadays, with Easy A's running rampant and all this other stuff, same name update, um, now in this current period in the game, like, running the TUR of LRs is almost completely pointless. There are a couple of instances where you can still do it and it be reasonably worthwhile but the tur versions are often weak to the point where you really need dupes in them in order for them to be worth running because the one that comes to mind the most is turles right because turles his best link partner if you're not a massive whale and you don't have the tur of the lr is agl turles who obviously until he gets his easy a is quite weak so if you did end up getting really lucky in your summons and you have a ton of copies of him then his tur is actually better to run than the agl uh, one as long as you've got a couple of dupes in him but like if you have one spare copy I don't think he's necessarily worth running, but even so. So that means you don't want to run the risk of like rainbowing out an LR and then on the next banner you end up pulling a copy of them because I know for me, the first LR I ever rainbowed, like summonable LR, was Super Saiyan 3 Goku and then on the next legendary summon banner I pulled two copies of him. I mean, this was way before coins, so this was just bad luck, but that is something to bear in mind. So if I say in this video, this is who I think is number one, and this is number two, if you have number one already with two dupes and you don't have number two, then you should actually probably go for number two. So funnily enough, the top three, uh, well, actually, they're probably not the top three, because there's one I always forget about who's a bit lower down, but the top three here, uh, Turles, Jiren, and Gohan, are all ones that I think are worth considering. So if we go over to the wiki, we've got the full power Jiren. So not only does he have a different name, so obviously he links up with the STR Jiren. Uh, at his release, they released the Intopo, who he's really, really good on rotation with. This guy is kind of like the LR version of Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. They are very, very similar. They have very similar passives, very similar active skills. They are pretty much the same unit, but with a slightly different skin and a couple of minor details that are slightly different. So when it comes to Jiren, uh, he is an absolute caveman unit, as Goresh coined the term, which is pretty great. Attack and defense 200%. He gets built up of key every time he gets attacked, up to five. And then his attacks are effective against all types when the enemy is attack down or defense down. Um... So he can be very, very good in some of the difficult content, even against type disadvantage. And then his active skill gives him a 30% attack and defensive buff, whilst also debuffing the enemy's attack and defense 30% and stunning everyone for one turn. So not super useful in some of the harder content because you can't lower attack and you can't stun, but definitely useful for buffing himself 
and then in the content where the debuff is effective then obviously it's very good uh, it can only be activated after the character receives five or more attacks so the problem is that ability is super super good for something like super battle road but you have to be attacked five times so seeing it in super battle road is uh going to be a little bit less likely unless you get one of those turns where you basically have like five attacks in slot one and then of course you're going to be ready for turn three for Jiren to use his active skill and at that point you're probably just going to finish off the fight so if you can get it it is very effective now one of the reasons why I think he is worth picking up with yellow coins if you don't have him is if you're somebody out there who's struggling with the space traveling warriors mission of the GT legendary Goku event you can actually use double Jiren leads to use a universe 11 slash universe survival saga team of units that are all space traveling warriors and you can beat the event that way if you don't have bojack so i've seen screenshots of it being done i personally don't have jiren and so i tried out that run using the str jiren as the leader instead but unfortunately the str jiren unit himself is a bit of a liability these days and uh, he uh, doesn't really survive very well in that run but if you have double LR Jiren leads, that is a way of getting that done. So he is actually useful for a difficult piece of content if that is a mission that you still need to complete. So that is a reason that he would be worth picking up. So next up, we have Turles, who I have talked about quite a bit on the channel. Uh, he is probably my favorite summonable LR. Um, it took me over a thousand stones to get a copy of him. And then when he got added to the coin shop, uh, I did all my summons on whatever banner that was. Didn't pull any extra copies of him, so I did actually buy my first dupe for him. And then, of course, as I was saying at the beginning, literally like the next legendary summon banner after that, I think I pulled two copies of him. So I have him at 90% now. And uh, again, as I was saying, whilst it's very tempting for me to spend those yellow coins to get the uh, rainbow star on him, I, uh, I think that's a little bit too risky of a play. The difference really in a unit between 90% and 100 isn't really that significant anyway. But yeah, Tolez is incredibly good. Um, even at 55%, he puts out attack stats that are pretty insane. And his defense is reasonably good at 55%. Um, now, as we were saying earlier, his best link partner technically is the AGL Tolez if you don't have multiple copies of him and can run the TUR and AGL Turles is a bit of a liability in harder content because his defense is not particularly great so he can link up okay with some other units and he is on a lot of great teams right he's on movie bosses terrifying conquerors space traveling warriors planetary destruction and he's on final trump card so he does have other units that he can link up well with the only problem is he has links like destroyer of the universe which is 25 percent attack and 15 percent defense at level 10 but that is a link that pretty much like only turles units have so that is a pretty significant link to be missing out on but he could still be good without it and something you have to bear in mind of course now that we are getting into the meta of category leaders getting easy a's uh, agl turles will be getting an easy a at some point and I think when he gets his easy A, he's going to be crazy. So he's definitely worth considering. Uh, I love this unit. Like I said, I still consider him currently, in terms of non dokon Fest LRs, he's probably my favorite summonable LR. So, and then the third one we had at the list in that top three in the shop was Super Saiyan 2 Gohan. I feel like people underrate this guy, but he's really, really good. I mean, back when Truth and I were racing to see who could be the first person to beat movie heroes with no items uh, for Super Battle Road, it was the release of this guy that made doing that stage possible at the time. It's probably doable without him now, but he's really, really good. Um, I think a thing that puts a lot of people off is to get the full potential out of him, you have to have a movie heroes Goku on the team which there's not a huge amount of options that are really good on some of the teams that he's on. Of course, you know, with easy A's and stuff, that's always going to change in the future. Potential for things like, you know, a resurrection of F. No Confess Goku one day, maybe. Um, but even without it, I think he's really, really good. I run him often as a third slot floating unit on the Super Saiyan 2 team, where you won't have a movie hero's Goku. And he's still really good, because he has that mechanic where he gets an additional one key per key sphere. So it's really easy to get his 18 key super. He has a built-in chance to do additional super, so once you have a dupe or 
or some skill orbs, he can super attack three times in one turn. Both of his super attacks will raise his defense, so the more supers he does, the higher his defense is. So he can tank reasonably well in difficult content. Um, and then, of course, if you are running him on a team with a movie hero's Goku, uh, the first time you drop below 59% HP, uh, you get the buff for him. And then you also get the ability to use his active skill, which gives him 12 key, 59% attack for one turn. Unfortunately, I remember from when he first came out, this design is a little bit wonky because the active skill is obviously only available at the start of the turn. But apart from his passive, that can activate mid-turn. So if you get a, if you drop below 58% HP in the middle of the turn before he attacks, he gets an additional 59% attack and a guaranteed crit when performing an ultra super. Um, so you've probably already like picked up the key to get an ultra super for him. Then you drop below the HP requirement middle of the turn. So then he gets this attack buff and gets the guaranteed crit, which is nice. And then on the next turn, if you're still below the HP, you can use the active skill. But ideally, you want to use both of them on the same turn. Because then the active skill, you're getting 12 keys. So you're pretty much going to guarantee that you get a 24 key super and another attack buff. So all of that attack stacked on top with a guaranteed crit, that turn would be ridiculous damage wise for him. It's just annoying that you sometimes can't get both of them to go off at the same time. So, when we go back to the list of LRs, uh, there are a couple that I think are still worth getting uh, if you don't have them. Obviously, bear in mind as well that when it comes to certain units, like if you're a huge fan of this unit, like I really wanted him when he first came out. I got lucky and got, of it, got him off his first banner. Uh, he is good. I think he's underrated because he's not, you know, the best LR in the game or anything, but he is good. His active skill is awesome. Great scene from the show. If you really, really want him, just get him. It doesn't matter if he's not the best unit in the game, but I'm just going over some of the best options for ones that are not only very good, but can be helpful for, you know, things like the Space Traveling Warriors mission for LGE, stuff like that. Whereas this Vegeta is probably not really going to help you to do anything that you haven't done yet in the game. So scrolling down, we got the year, f uh, year five um, LRs from the anniversary. Both of them are kind of mid nowadays, sadly. Broly and Chilai Lemo have a really interesting design, but they're not on any teams. Rose is interesting as well, but not great defense. Uh, Nappa and Vegeta can be useful for like the World Tournament because of the AoE, but other than that, not super good. And then next up, we have the UI Goku. So UI Goku, if we go to his page on the wiki here, uh, he's an older unit, but obviously with the anniversary this year, having brought us the AGL Ultra Instinct Goku, this guy is probably like his best link partner. That rotation is absolutely ridiculous on any team that you can run them on. And even if you don't have the UI Goku from the anniversary, this guy's super, super good as well. Um, he's just a really good unit in a lot of events, like 70% chance to dodge, Yes, if you take him into like ESBR and some of that other stuff, you can get unlucky and he won't dodge a super and you die. But that's kind of, you know, that's just the way RNG works, right? But if you get him built up nice and early by having him dodge attacks in the early turns, he can get up to some pretty ridiculously high stats. And then, yeah, the rotation of him and the other UI Goku is uh, very, very strong. So now if we keep looking, Spirit Bomb Goku is pretty good, but not like, you know, top tier anymore. Same with God Goku. Kale and Khalifla can be good for any content where you're fighting Pure Saiyans or Universe Survival Saga because they get a ton of extra attacks. They get a load of built-in dodge and all things like that, so they're very good. They also infinitely stack defense. So even in things like the GT Goku event, because they're going to get a bunch of guaranteed supers, by the time you get to the end where you're fighting a tech enemy and they can't dodge anymore, their defense is going to be high enough that they're going to be good defensively anyway. So LR Full Power Freezer. Sadly, he didn't get an EZA with this celebration. And even though we do have the same name update, he's kind of been completely replaced by the new one. The Android Trio, unfortunately, they're very outdated defensively. Uh, tech LR Broly, I think, is still very good. Um, I think he's still a fairly decent option. Like, obviously, if you're struggling with Extreme Tech Super Battle Road, he's still very good for that, even though his defense isn't great, but he can still put out a ton of damage. Uh, the GT Trio and Baby are pretty decent, but again, GT Trio are good because they are on a kind of limited team. They are still technically the best Dragon Ball Seekers lead, which has gotten some buffs recently. You can use a Dragon Ball Seekers team also to do the Space Traveling Warriors L uh, GT LGE mission. 
So that's pretty good. Baby, I think he's going to be kind of like Bojack, where he's underrated. But as soon as we get a Dokon Fest baby, and one of the best link partners for him is the LR, and then that becomes a rotation that you can run on his team, I think he'll probably see a bit more love. But I have him with two dupes at 1110 links, and I think he is pretty good. And then we start moving into some of the older ones. Trunks and Mai, uh, they're just terrible at this point until they get an ECA. But Goku and Frieza. So Goku and Frieza obviously are another one of these LRs that actually do have their EZA. So if you got lucky with various pools during the anniversary but you don't have them, they are technically the best leader skill in the game. No other unit has 177% leader skill. Um, and obviously representatives of Universe 7 is a pretty insane team now after all the buffs from the anniversary, even with just all the free-to-play units. So these guys are still a very worthwhile option if you don't have them. Uh, then if we go back to the list again, so Cell, Bardock, Beerus, Super Sentry, Goku, Bojack, Mighty Mask, this era of the like 100% leads, um, most of them now, they kind of need their easy A's to really be back in the forefront. Bojack is very good on the Bojack team, but... Um, He's, I'd say he's probably the best out of all of these guys without their EZA. But obviously it depends who's going to get one next. We don't ever know. And then of course looking back to the OG set. Uh, Trunks and Goku Black uh, going to get their EZA at some point. Margin Vegeta obviously has his EZA on Global. Same with Gohan as on JP. But they don't have theirs on Global yet. But obviously bear in mind those are upcoming uh, Gohan's was a little bit disappointing. Margin Vegeta's is good, but not as crazy as the last one that we're going to talk about here, which is, of course, the STR LR Broly. So, STR LR Broly, after his EZA, is arguably one of the best LRs in the game. Any team that you can use him on, uh, he's going to be super useful. I mean, he single handedly destroys the versus physical stage of that new Bardock event. Um, he's just super super good right he gets a bunch of additional um, attack and defense uh, and performs an additional super um, he gets five key when there's a pure saiyans or hybrid saiyans enemy so if you're going into any of the harder content where there's only one enemy and you don't need to use the 12 key super getting that five extra key you're going to be able to hit the 18 key super and do more damage on the single target and then you get the guaranteed 12 key aoe anyway but then he also has attacks effective against all types and guarantees to hit when there's a goku family enemy so in the goku events they can't dodge him but he also has effective against all types and it's goku family not just goku so this is really useful for any super battle road stages or anything like that where if even one of the enemies is a goku family enemy it means your aoe super is going to be effective against all types and so broly just absolutely destroys everyone so there you go we went into quite a lot of detail but that is all the units that are currently available in the coin shop that i think are worth getting uh, on global like i said we didn't actually talk about tapion and minosha so let me quickly bring their page up on the wiki here and we'll talk about them uh, tapion and minosha are definitely an interesting lr um, but the only problem with them i feel like they are quite limited um, so let's bring up their page here so they lead storied figures and siblings bond storied figures is an interesting category uh, siblings bond obviously you have the uh go bros as like the best lead um i did try them out when they released i didn't pull them but i used a friend and used the gohan and goten to lead like a siblings bond team and they're certainly very strong they're a very good card and obviously you link them up with the agl easy a tapion and then that rotation is very very good um, the only problem is, like, you can use that rotation on this team and then, like, movie heroes. And then that's, that's kind of it. Um, they're a fun unit, but you're just not really going to use them in much content. So I wouldn't really put them above a lot of the units that we talked about here. When I was talking about the top three at the beginning, maybe I would put Tapion and Minosha above Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, depending on which, like, content you need to do, right? Because a lot of this comes down to which unit is going to be best for your box. But I definitely don't think that they are a better choice than like Jiren, Turles or Broly, for example. So let me know what you guys think down below. If you do go ahead and buy a unit with coins based on this video, even if it's one of the ones that I didn't mention, let me know down below. And let me know who you think the best one is to buy in your opinion. 
let me know all of this down below so that is going to be it for the video guys this has been the master again smash that like button subscribe to the channel if you are new check out the links down below for the discord and the merch store and i will see you all again soon have a good one